welcome back to Temple Boy Turnings. I am Steve. This week I am making a percussion instrument. Uh, I work in a special needs school and uh, we have a few bits and pieces that the kids use for sensory reasons and for music and stuff like that. Um, we have a few of these percussion instruments in the school but they keep losing or breaking the um, sticks for playing them. So uh, they're very simple. It's just a simple bit of spindle turning. Uh, there's slots in them and you have one deep hole and one not so deep hole and that's what gives it the different sound. Now they're a cool little instrument for the kids, it's just I don't really like the design on how these are held together. I just had to make this because these are missing, but that's, you know, you'll see how this is made in the project coming up. But um, this is how you store them. The sticks are pushed into a little hole in the side and that's how you store them. And I thought that's very awkward. So I've done a little design change and uh, I've also made them so that they can be used for wheelchair users as well. So head over to the lathe and I will explain what I'm going to do. So here is a piece of wood. Um, I measured it halfway and then uh, I measured 100mm each way from the centre which will give us a 200 millimeter um, instrument and it leaves around about 16 millimeters either end um, and what I did was then I marked the center and I just run it into the table saw up to this point bottom and top and uh, now it doesn't cut all the way through into the centre there, you know, it'll stick out just slightly, but it doesn't matter because we're going to be drilling through this anyway, so that centre piece will be taken out anyway. You've got two slots, 60 millimetres long by 3 millimetres wide, right through the, the blank. So that's, that's how I marked it out, and then on the ends, after I slot it, obviously we're going to be putting this between centres to um, to put two tenons either end. So what we need to do is we need to mark our centre line 90 degrees to our slot through the centre. And I'll show you why in a second when we put it onto the lathe. That's both ends. Okay, so I am just setting this piece of wood up to the centre of my... Uh, step center and my uh, live center and the way I center it up is I get the pin lined up with the slot obviously because the slot is the center and then I find 90, the 90 degree line that I drew which is halfway the other way I line that up with the center of the pin as well on the step center and on the tail stock end and that should put our piece center because we have the slot, it makes it a little bit difficult. But as long as you're close enough, that should be about centre. Lock that down. And that's us ready to turn that round. Now when you're cutting these slots, I used the table saw. It was just easier, it's just one cut, about the width, the width of the blade. Uh, is about the width I need to be. Um, obviously you don't want the, the slots too wide because you don't want kids putting their fingers in there and getting them caught. So just a nice neat slot like that is plenty enough. Um, you can do it with the hand saw, you can do it with the jigsaw, you can do it with the band saw. You know, just cut your slot any way you can. Just a handy tip, um, just while I'm doing this, uh, it's more for the newer turners, 
these lines that I have marked here that I originally had marked here and here and here when I turn the machine on you will see you'll still see those lines and as long as you can still see those lines you've got flat spots okay as soon as those pencil lines disappear you've got a round piece I'll show you what I mean as you can see the pencil marks still as soon as those pencil marks disappear we know we're round and there we are we are round okay we can put two tenons either end now and uh, we can sh do our basic shape as well so I need to find my center line again just so that I can uh, I know where all my dips and coves and things are going there so that's my center line I'm going to need to mark the edges of my slots because I can't see them when they're spinning so this will be dipping down here to the center now what I need to do as well I need to mark a hundred millimeters either way where my tenons are going and also where the end of the instrument is so first things first we need to put a tenon either side have my calipers set to 30 mil that's I think it's about an inch and a quarter and we're just going to reduce that down right in the center there we go roughly about there and all we're going to do is we're going to just bring down from just after these lines where the uh, where the slots are and just bring it down to that point in the center and we just use our spindle gouge for doing that Tidy that up with a scraper. Okay, that's good. So now I just want to put a couple of small coves either side here. Just, just really for when the kids are running the stick along it, it gives it a different sound. That is the general shape I want on the outside. There's nothing fancy, it's just simple spindle turning. Um, so now I'm going to sand that up and get it to where I want. I'm just going to go to 240 and I'm going to Yorkshire grit the outside. And then we're going to put it into the chuck and we're going to start boring out um, either end.
Right, I have it in the chuck. It's been finished, well, it's been sanded with uh, the Yorkshire Grit Abrasive Paste. Uh, I'm not putting any finish on it Finish on it at the moment. I will probably just use a few coats of spray lacquer because it's quite a hardy finish because the kids are going to be beating on these things with uh, with the sticks. Not too hard, but um, I just think lacquer will be a, a stronger finish. Um, there is a little bit of Yorkshire grit and tissue caught in the slots, but I'm not too worried about that. So the next thing is now is I'm just going to drill up inside here um, and bore out the inside. Now one is going to go deeper than the other because it gives a different sound. And that's what you want. You want two different sounds each, each end of the instrument. So one will be deeper and one will be shallow. So yeah, I'm just going to bore those out using the Jacob's Chuck and forcing a bit. Um, I will go in with a normal wood bit then after the forcing a bit and then clean out and kind of make a bit of a funnel uh, just so it's not rough if the kids manage to get their fingers in there. They shouldn't be able to because it's, it's deep enough but um, yeah that's the next move. Okay, so that's the force and a bit gone in. It's gone in about three inches, which is about 80 mil. It's just about to the end of my slot there at the moment. Um, and now I'm going to run this uh, 12 mil bit in a bit further, a bit deeper, probably to around about here on this side. Anyway, this is going to be the deep end. And then I'm going to use my hollower and just funnel it out kind of follow the same external shape but inside and just funnel it out to the size of the the force a bit There we go, that's where I want it to be. And now we are going to just run the sandpaper in this slot, like so. Okay, that's pretty good. Just before we turn this round and drill the other end, uh, just a handy tip is to uh, cut a piece of scrap wood the same thickness as your slot and, uh, and slide it in. Obviously when you close your chuck up it's going to squish that and close that slot down. So if you just put that packer piece in it will stop it from uh, squashing down and coming loose in your chuck. Just a handy little tip. I learned the hard way. That's that hollowed out. Now we can bring the tool rest around and we can chop off this end and we can finish and sand up this end and um, then swap it round and chop off our other end again. Just put a bit of uh, support in there just so that it, you know, it takes away the wobble when I'm parting this end off. Very dramatic. Right, I have this side completely finished. Uh, sanded inside and out and Yorkshire gritted. And I've sanded the slot. Now what I want to do is I want to use the 12 mil drill bit again, but I want to drill right through this time. Um, and that will be for two reasons. Number one, it will be to store the stick that you'll use for knocking the instrument. So you can slide it in and slot it into inside. But also um, it will be for uh, wheelchair users. You'll be able to put a, a string or elastic band through the center and attach it to the wheelchair. 
and as it's hanging in front of them they'll be able to hit it it's right there in front of them they don't need to grip it with two hands so it kind of acts as a double purpose There we go, job done. Now we've just got to make the knocker. Okay, I have a scrap piece of wood, uh, the same type of wood that the instrument's made out of. And I'm just going to turn this round. Um, I have my size I need, which is 12mm, on my calipers. I'm going to get it to that all the way along. And then we'll put a little bit of fancy into it, maybe. And uh, that'll be it just a stick for knocking it. And there you go folks, a upgraded sensory rhythm percussion instrument. Um, very simple upgrade, but I think it's going to be a lot easier to store these like this. You're not going to lose the sticks as easily. Um, and with the hole through the center, it doesn't make any difference to the sound of it. But now we can put a string or elastic or something through that and uh, fix it to the arms of a wheelchair. Have this hanging in front of the child uh, that's a wheelchair user and either assist them or they can hold on to the stick and they can just knock it in front of them. Um, so it's much better for them and they can join in with the rest of the class now which is fantastic uh, it's all about inclusion so yeah i hope you enjoyed it like i say it was a very simple spindle turning um the only thing that gets a little bit awkward is the depth Do you know you, you're a long way off of the chuck and uh, it gets a little bit of vibration so you've got to just be careful and probably have the right tools for um for, for getting in deep. Maybe what might work a bit better is one of those cone drills. I don't know if you've seen them. They're like a cone-shaped drill and they might work brilliantly for these. You might be able to get right in there and not have to use any turning tools at all to get inside. But um, I hope it's inspired you to maybe uh, head out and make a few instruments. I think I'm going to make a few more of these and make a few more sensory toys for um, children with special needs and uh, maybe make a little bit of a series of them. Um, there's a few ideas that I have um, with existing ones that need a little bit of upgrading and with new ideas that I have. So I think I might do a few of those. So if you know anyone with a child with special needs, especially autism, they, they, they like a lot of sensory input and these, these kind of things are brilliant. Um, maybe you can uh, head out into your workshop and make something similar. I hope it's inspired you to, to think outside the box and make something a little bit different to the usual stuff that's being made. Just to let you know that on Tuesdays I am going to start a new segment. Um, I'll do a few lives and I'll do a few uploads depending on the weekly mood uh, and the time I get. Um, 
It's going to be called Turn It Tuesday and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it out to you folks that watch my videos to challenge me to make things. Um, if there's something that you would like to see turned or that you maybe have thought about turning it yourself but can't really work out how to do it and would like to kind of brainstorm or get me to brainstorm for you, then just get in touch with me, templeboyturnings at gmail.com or on Facebook, Temple Boy Turnings, or Instagram, Temple Boy Turnings, or you can go to my website, Temple Boy Turnings. Uh, you'll type it in there and up I'll come somewhere. Um, get in touch with me and uh, throw down a few challenges, ask a few questions, and on Turn It Tuesdays, I will address any questions that you have, or any challenges, or any collaborations maybe that you might want to do. So, uh, yeah get in touch with me. The first one is going to be pretty good and uh, yeah I think it might be alive too so I might see you on Tuesday. <laughs>